All right, so in this video, we're going to take a look at random access files. So the two key things that we want to understand here, first, we're going to go through a conceptual description of uh, kind of comparing sequential file access, what we've been doing up to this point, against what we're going to look at now, which is going to be random file access. And then once we've gone through this uh, conceptual description of it, then we want to also go ahead and see a simple Java program to implement a random access file and be able to shoot, uh, show some of the behaviors that are unique to trying to access files randomly. So with random file access, the key distinction is going to be how we navigate through the file and how it is that we move to certain locations inside of it. So let's imagine that we've got some kind of text file or binary file and we break up the individual pieces of data into different locations inside of this file. So say maybe we're dealing with something like a sequence of characters or a sequence of numbers and we want to be able to start at the beginning of the file. So when we first open it up, we're at the very beginning of it and we want to navigate through each one of these locations to then move to a particular location where um, some data is stored that we want to be able to access or maybe what we want to do is we want to navigate to a certain location to overwrite that data with some new value or you just want to be able to read the data from that particular point. So uh, in the previous cases, whenever we would deal with reads and writes, we were doing this with sequential file access where we start at the beginning and we would have to navigate through each position of the file to arrive at the particular location that we were interested in. And this is going to be different from dealing with random access files where instead what we're going to do now is try to immediately navigate to that location. And the benefit with this is when we're dealing with very large files, so you want to be able to immediately navigate to this location. In very large files, if we deal with the sequential approach, because of the fact that we need to navigate through every one of these positions in the file, if there are a lot of these, there's a lot of data in that file, this process becomes a lot less efficient and it also becomes more resource intensive. Whereas when we're dealing with just immediately navigating to that location, it doesn't really matter how much data is in that file. If we can always consistently navigate to it in a very short amount of time, and that amount of time is constant for any position in the file, then this will overall be a pretty strong performance improvement. Another thing that we can also, uh, another benefit that comes with random file access is that once we've navigated to a particular location in the file, trying to navigate backwards can be somewhat difficult, uh, particularly when we're dealing with sequential file access. But in the case of random file access, if we've already navigated to a particular position in the file, it's actually pretty easy to navigate backwards. We're gonna end up using the same method for both of these processes, whether that's moving forward or backwards. So the overall process is very simple and very straightforward. So, the other couple of things that I want to make a note of here, uh, in order to do all of this navigation, we need to keep track of these different positions in the file. So one thing that I want to make clear of right now is going to be a particular mechanism that allows us to track our location in the file, which is going to be the file pointer. So we're going to imagine this arrow that I've been using, this notation, to represent our file pointer. And the other thing to keep in mind is the different positions in the file. Very similar to things like arrays and array lists, the initial position, the very beginning of it, is going to be position zero. So just like arrays and array lists, it's zero based. And as we navigate through it, we're just going to increment this position. So we have zero, one, two, and three. And so then the question is, what do each of these positions actually represent? Well, in the case of files, each one of these positions is going to represent a particular byte in the file. So this very starting position right here, this is going to be byte zero of the file. The next location over is byte one, and then we have byte two, and then byte three. So whenever we're using random file access, we want to always be keeping track of the particular byte that we're trying to navigate to. And we'll see in a little bit that this is particularly important when we're dealing with uh, data types, um, the majority of which in Java uh, consist of uh, more than a single byte. So it's very important that we keep track of precisely where we're navigating to in the file. Uh, the other thing that I want to make clear is understanding how it is that we're going to actually be using methods in relation to random file access. 
So there's a particular rule of thumb that we want to keep in mind here, which is that any file that's opened or even just created using uh, this particular class that we're going to be working with, which is the random access file class, any of these files that are going to be treated as binary files. Okay. And so what this means is that in order to try to uh, read or write data with a random access file, uh, this should be a capital F, keep that in mind when we get to implementing this. Uh, but essentially, what we should keep in mind is that the methods that we're going to be using are very similar to the kinds of methods that we were already seeing when we were talking about uh, binary files uh, in our previous video. So when we were working with the uh, input and output classes, so things like data input stream, file input stream, uh, file output stream, and data output stream, uh, we saw methods like write UTF or write int or uh, read UTF and read int. So we have very similar methods that we're going to be using for random access files. Okay, so now we'll come back over to our uh, either a text editor or our IDE. We're going to go ahead and create a new program or project. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at random access files. So I'm going to call this my random access file demo. Go ahead and create our class header. So we'll have public class random access file demo. We'll then go ahead and give this a main method. So our public static void main. A string array of arguments. And then the one import that I'm going to need for this, because we are again still dealing with classes that are related to uh, file IO, so file management, we again are going to need to import everything that we're using from our IO package. So we'll just go ahead and do that wildcard import to grab all of that. And then right here, the very first thing I'm gonna go ahead and start setting up for this is going to be the data that I want to initially write to my file. So the way that I'm going to, uh, going to approach this, I'm going to do this with a sequence of characters. So I wanna do it this way instead of doing it with a string because when it comes to navigating to specific bytes somewhere inside of it and kind of manipulating their data. So when we look a little bit at overwriting some of this data, doing this with a string is a bit complicated because of the way that it's formatted. So it can kind of, uh, as we saw before when I showed, you know, being able to use write UTF and then doing something like read char, we saw that there was a complete, um, a, a very strong distinction between the formatting for individual characters and a full string. So I want to avoid any issues like that where it would kind of corrupt the data uh, by us instead just doing everything with a sequence of characters. So we're going to do it with a character array. I'm going to call this message. And we'll go ahead and just initialize the contents of this. And the contents for this message, you might be able to guess, is going to be that uh, same phrase, that same expression that I've been using uh, for all of these previous uh, demos for file manipulation. So we're going to do all of the individual characters for the phrase hello world. So we're going to do the H E L L O comma we'll have a space. Make sure we remember that as well. For W O R L D and the exclamation point. Okay. And then just to make sure that this is at least a little bit more readable, we'll go ahead and move this to the next line and just kind of line it up with the rest of it. Okay. So this character array for message, this is going to be the data that we initially write to the file. And then a little bit later, what I'm going to do is introduce another character array so we can kind of overwrite some of this data to see how that ends up looking. Okay. So the next thing I need to go ahead and do now that I've got my character array set up is I want to go ahead and start writing all of the code for actually uh, establishing a connection to my file and then being able to write this data to it. So the way that we're going to do this, we'll use, uh, at this point, what we've seen is being kind of the uh, most effective approach, so the most secure and the most robust, which is using a try with resources block followed up with a catch block. So we're going to do a try. And inside of here, we're going to go ahead and put in our random access file class. So we're going to be making an object of that class. For the reference variable, the name that I'm going to give it is going to be random file. So equal to a new random access file. And then inside of here, 
for the constructor of my random access file class. Uh, this constructor is going to take two arguments. So there are two parameters that it's expecting. The first is going to be the name of the file that I want to uh, that I want to be accessing to do my reads and writes. So we'll go ahead and put that in. For this one, since I'm going to be writing this message to it, I'm just going to go ahead and make the file message.dat. So again, as I mentioned, we're going to be um, manipulating this file as if it were a binary file. So I'm going to go ahead and just use an extension that is appropriate for a binary file. So we use dot dat. The second parameter is going to be the mode that I want to access this file in. There are going to be two standard modes that we can talk about here. These are going to include read-only, which if we were doing read-only would just be an R here. The other mode, which is the one that we're actually going to use, is going to be read-write. So we're going to have an R and a W. And obviously the reason we want to use this in read-write mode is because we're taking these characters from message and we are writing these to the file. Okay. And then inside of this try block, what I'm going to go ahead and do is just step through each character in my message array. And I'm going to go ahead and write these to my random file. So to do this, I'm going to use an enhanced for loop since we're working with an array. So we're going to say for. We have our individual chars. For each individual char in message, I'm going to go ahead and just call it letter. Just use that as the name for it. So I'll say for each char in or each char called letter in message, we want to take a random file and we want to go ahead and write that char to it. And so put in letter right there. And then once that's finished, it will go ahead and automatically close the file for us since we're doing a try with resources. The next thing we're going to do is include our catch block. So for this one, since we're dealing with file I.O., we're just going to go ahead and catch any I.O. exception. We'll just give it that standard name of E. And then all I want to do for this one, keep this pretty simple and just print whatever error message or exception message we're getting to the console. Okay. So now that we've got all this, we'll go ahead and compile this and run it. So come over here. So we're going to compile and run our random access file demo. Make sure that we have it in the right order. Okay, so now that we've got that, we'll go ahead and compile it. So we've got random access file demo. So we go ahead and run that. Uh, in this case, now when we run it, we don't get any exceptions or errors being thrown. So if we come over here, we can scan through this and we'll see message.dat. Uh, this didn't previously exist in our project, so it went ahead and created this for us and then wrote to it. So that'll be one of the things to note about this read-write mode. We'll add on to that in just a moment. So let's go ahead and open this file real quick and take a look inside of it. So inside of the file, we don't actually see any binary data. Instead, we just see the phrase hello world written in uh, essentially just plain text. So one of the other things about using random access file that's pretty convenient is that while it's going to treat the uh, file as a binary file, that doesn't necessarily mean that the data itself will be treated as just raw binary data. So a uh, really convenient thing about this is that it's going to be written in uh, just plain text for us. So uh, in certain cases, you probably wouldn't necessarily want it to do this if you're trying to maintain some uh, degree of efficiency with uh, the amount of data that this file is going to take up. In this particular case, this will be useful to us since we can go ahead and see any changes that we make to this file, uh, say like overwriting certain words or phrases inside of it. So keep that in mind and we'll add on to this program in just a moment with that. But one of the first things I want to go ahead and address now that I mentioned was the different, uh, the different modes or the, the different characteristics for the two modes that we're talking about for random access files. So we've got our read-write mode, this RW, and we've got our read-only mode, which is just R. So there's a couple of rules that we want to keep in mind about these. So first we'll talk about read-write, since this is what we're working with. Uh, one of those is that if you, uh, if the file does not exist, so if the file that we're trying to write to does not exist while we're in read-write mode, uh, it will go ahead and create it. So we'll say if the file does not exist, 
the file is created. Uh, additionally, while we're in read-write mode, uh, if the file does exist, we're just going to go ahead and overwrite the content inside of that file. So it will just use the file that already exists, and we'll just go ahead and overwrite the content. So it's very similar to the print writer class. In read-only mode, if the file does not exist, uh, this will be treated very similar to the uh, scanner class. So if the file does not exist in this case, a file not found exception is thrown. And then also if we're in read-only mode and we attempt to do something other than reading, so like if we try to write to the file, so if you try to write to the file, uh, in this particular case, an IO exception is going to be thrown. Okay. So these are going to be the different rules that we want to keep in mind about uh, these two modes for random access files. Okay. So then the next thing I want to go ahead and take a look at is uh, up to this point with what we've written so far, we're not really seeing anything about this that makes it any different from uh, just a uh, normal file access, writing to a file. Uh, at this point, everything that we've done uh, basically seems kind of like working with a sequential file. You know, if you want to write each one of these characters to the file, it's going to go through the file in order and slowly add each one of those characters. And there's no skipping around or uh, any actual random access occurring here. So we want to go ahead and take a look at what's going on there, or uh, essentially being able to see how we can actually uh, start doing that. So I made a mention already of this file pointer uh, that indicates the position in the file where we're currently located. So I'm going to go ahead and add that right here. And the way that we recognize the file pointer, or the way that it's interpreted in Java, is going to be as a long. So the data type for the file pointer is going to be a long. And let's say that we initially started off at 0. I'll go ahead and modify this position in just a moment. So we can uh, go ahead and use this to specify a particular point in the file that we want to navigate to. So we can go ahead and start either uh, reading from or writing to that specific location. And the way that we can do that is we can go ahead and grab our file. So we're going to grab that random file. And we can go ahead and use the seek method. So the seek method is going to take a value right here. It's going to be a long for the file pointer that's going to specify the position in the file that we want to navigate to. Okay, so I want to be able to put the file pointer into this so we can go ahead and move to a particular position. So in this case, what this is going to do with the file pointer is it's actually going to navigate back to the beginning of my file. And what's really convenient about this is that we could actually go ahead and because we have this open in read-write mode, uh, this allows us to do both reading and writing with this file. So we could use this file pointer as it is to navigate back to the beginning of the file and then we can actually read the contents from the file. So if you want to read the files, uh, this file's contents, again, keeping in mind that it's being treated like a, uh, like a binary file, we're going to need to go ahead and use the same approach that we used before if we want to be able to read all of the contents of this file. So we're going to go ahead and include a boolean here. Uh, we'll say uh, end of file. This will be initially set to false. And then right here, what we can go ahead and do is just have our little try, or uh, we'll do a while loop with a try inside of it. So we'll say while we are not at the end of the file. We'll go ahead and try to just print out these characters. So we'll go ahead and do a print statement here. And for this print statement, we'll put in our random file dot read char. And we want to be able to catch that EOF exception. So when we finally hit the end of the file, that exception will get thrown. And using that, we'll go ahead and change end of file to true. Okay. So with this whole combination here, now we can go ahead and write this message to the file. We can navigate back to the beginning of the file because we're using seek to move the file pointer back to position zero. And then we can go ahead and read the file. We can do all of this in this one single uh, this uh, essentially this one single block or this one single bubble of code before we actually close this random access file at the end of this try block. Okay, 
So let's say we go ahead and do that uh, for its own sake. Let's say we leave this in here just to demonstrate that it will just overwrite the content of it. We'll come over here go ahead and clear this. Let's see. Actually, we have the correct one. I'll go ahead and compile that. And then we'll go ahead and run it. And there we go. So we can see it printing out the phrase hello world at the very end. If we double check in our message like that, we see that we still have hello world there as well. Okay. So this is one instance of being able to use the file pointer. So we can do a combination of both writing to the file and then reading from the file all in a single go. The other thing we could also do is use this file pointer to navigate back to a uh, particular position so that maybe we want to overwrite some of the content in the file, but not necessarily all of the content in it. So for this one, what I'm going to go ahead and do is add a second character array. And for this one, what I'm going to go ahead and do is call this something like new message. And for this, I'm just going to go ahead and include a slightly smaller phrase because I only want to overwrite a little bit of my hello world phrase. And what I'm going to put here is going to be the word earth. Okay. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is set it up in such a way that we can move the file pointer to this W right here. And then from there, we're just going to overwrite the word world with the word earth. So if we come over here, let's say just before we change the file pointer to zero, maybe initially we're going to go ahead and set it to this value and then a little bit later right here we'll change it to zero and so right here is where i'm going to go ahead and put in the part where i want to start writing out my new message so we'll have another enhanced for loop so we'll say for char letter in new message we want to go ahead and just take a random file and just write the chars to it but of course now the problem with this that I need to address is that currently, with the way I have this set up, uh, I'm not doing anything with the file pointer or the seek method between these two. So right now what would happen is it would just write out the phrase hello world, and then after that it would write out the word earth at the end. But instead what I need to do is just go ahead and move to where this W is in the file. So in order to do that, I need to think about the size of each of these individual characters uh, and how those are related to the amount of data that's in this file. So let's think about this. So we have this H right here at the very beginning of the file. So if we look over here, this H is at the very start of the file. So this is going to uh, represent the zeroth byte. But we have to remember that each char in Java is two bytes long. So not only does this H represent byte zero, it's also going to represent byte one. So this is going to make up zero and one. Then when we never get to the E, this is going to represent bytes two and three. So this is going to be 0 and 1, 2 and 3, and then we've got the L as 4 and 5, the second L is 6 and 7, and 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and then this W is going to be bytes 14 and 15. So if we want to navigate to the position in the file that's essentially the beginning of the W, then we need to change this to 14. Okay. So we'll go ahead and start this off at 14, and then right here, I'm going to go ahead and just do another seek using that file pointer. So I'm going to have a random file.seek and we'll put in our file pointer. And so now what this is going to do is we're going to write out all of this data. So if we keep going through this, we have 14 and 15 and then 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So by the end of this, we're at the end of the 25th byte. So essentially right here, is basically going to be the beginning of byte 26 as far as where we're going to start writing from again if we continue to write from the end of the file right here. We're going to go ahead and navigate back to the beginning of the W, so back to byte 14 by using the seek right here. And from there, we're going to start writing out each of the individual characters for the word earth. So this E is going to replace the W, the A is going to replace the O, this R is going to replace this R, the T will replace the L, and the H will, will replace the D, okay? So let's go ahead and overwrite each one of those five characters. After we do that, we're going to change the file pointer to zero, so we can go ahead and navigate to the beginning of the file, and then we'll go ahead and just print that phrase back up to the console again, okay? So the overall expectation with the way this is going to work is right now we've got hello world. We're going to change this to instead say hello earth, and then we're also going to print out that phrase hello earth to the console. 
So we'll go ahead and compile this. And then we'll go ahead and run it. And now we can see we've changed it so it says Hello Earth instead. So we've gone ahead and overwritten that little bit of data inside of that file. Okay. Okay, so this is going to wrap up everything regarding random file access. We did a quick example just showing writing some data to a file that we opened using random access file. We've seen a little bit about using the file pointer and the seek method to be able to do both uh, overwriting just a section of the code as well as being able to navigate back to the beginning of the file if we want to read the contents of it at the same time as we wrote to it. Uh, going into the next video, the last thing I want to talk about in relation to advanced file IO. So up to this point, we've seen a lot of different situations where we can uh, manipulate primitive data types using uh, by converting them to the raw binary format or the raw binary, uh, yeah, the raw binary format whenever we write them to a file. I want to also uh, expand on this by taking a look at doing this with uh, objects of classes through a process known as object serialization.